Hello, and welcome to another American Photo Treks post-processing video. And today we're going to post-process some of those images we took while we were in Antelope Canyon. We'll be using the HDR process, and uh, this is the processing system I use. I've come about it pretty new because it's a new process for me. I like it because it creates a more realistic uh, HDR image, uh, but it still has a lot of that great drama of that you get with you know great light and uh, great contrast. So I hope you guys like it too. Uh, I pre-selected five images here. These this is when we had that skinny little light beam in Canyon, and I apologize that this is getting here late. But this process I use uh, is a real memory hog. And, and my camera shoots 42 megabit images. And with my old computer, it was just taking forever to process these. It was, it was processing and getting them done, but boy, it was taking a long, long time. You'll notice this is the first time you joined us. Anytime I hit a key, you'll see it pop up in that little square right there. So you can follow along with me. If I go too fast, you can just pause it and catch up. I'm starting off in uh, Adobe Bridge, and that's what I use for my library system. I know a lot of you guys use Lightroom and different things. I just use Bridge. For me, it works. Um, so I'm going to hit Control and highlight the five bracketed images. And I'll just we'll start this one. Uh, this one I used a pretty straightforward bracket. I didn't do any exposure compensation with it. So it's minus two, minus one. There's the um, even exposure, plus one, plus two. And I think this got everything that I wanted to get because we can see here I've got all the detail from the rocks of the canyon. But of course, the light here is real blown out. But here on my minus two image, you can see that um, that light beam still shows up pretty nice. And just this little part right down here in the bottom is still kind of blown out, which is okay because with a light like that, um, it looks more realistic if it's hot down at the bottom. So I hit control, I highlight the five, my five bracketed images, and then I double click, which is going to open them in Adobe Camera Raw. And here you can see I'm using the latest version, which is Adobe Camera Raw 9.6. And there you get a better look at these images. This could turn out pretty. And what we do to start off is we're going to make some general edits to the images and then we're going to process them into HDR. And if I, I want to make sure if I'm processing to HDR that they all have the same white balance. And in this case it's 3650 minus 20. That's what auto white balance just found for us. And I want to make sure they all have the same and they do got to check that because if they don't, you'll get some color fringing, some other weird stuff when you go to uh, process. So make sure of that. See these little lines up here where the, my pointer's at? I'll hit that and select all. Now, every edit I make to one image will get made to all of them. So that's how that works. And I'm not going to do any of the changes here on white balance or any of the basic adjustments. Not going to do any sharpening here. The only thing I am going to do is I'm going to enable my lens profile. You watch, see what that does. It kind of takes care of the distortion and a little bit of the vignetting. And I'll want to make sure that my, I'll sync my settings for all of the images. And now I'm ready to merge to HDR. To do that, I come back up to my little squiggly lines right here, click on them and then it says merge to HDR. The reason I like this new process so much is because the HDR image that it creates is going to be in a format called DNG, which Adobe uses. It stands for digital negative. And um, it's basically just like a raw file. And you can process it like a raw file. It has all that information and, most importantly, all that great dynamic range. So that's why I like this so much. I get a great HDR image, 
perfectly toned out and I also get uh, a digital negative that I can edit any way I want to after I get it. So what you just saw, see how fast it merged them? With my other computer, about 10, 15 minutes to merge five images like this. So this is a significant upgrade. You can hit see auto tone on this. I don't really like the auto tone. I want to play with this myself. Um, and so uh, I'm not going to turn off auto tone. Uh, Deghosting, I usually put it low. I don't think we really got to worry about it too much. It was on a tripod, but you never know. The ghosts of Antelope Canyon. Deghosting would just be if the two images weren't aligned just perfectly, if it wasn't able to align the images just perfectly, you might get just, you know, a hair off. They call it a ghost, and it tries to fix that for you. That generally, doing this in RAW doesn't handle ghosting as well as some of the aftermarket programs like NickFX or uh, Photomatics. So that's kind of a downside of doing it this way. So I usually only do it this way if it's a, um, if I've done it on a tripod and I can be fairly sure I don't have any ghosts. So it's ready to merge and so now we're ready to create our file. And so as you can see it's an HDR DNG file. So I'm going to call this uh, cantaloupe light beam guess this one's going to be six, huh? All right, and save that. So now it's going to create its own little... Boy, this happened so fast. This computer is so nice. <laughs> so uh, it creates its own little file right down here. And uh, I'm loving this. Now, I don't really like my crop, so that's going to be the first thing I'm going to adjust. And I say this is going to look pretty good as a 4x5. I try and use standard crops whenever I can because uh, I don't know what I just did. I don't like it. Um, because people want to frame them later or something along those lines, it makes them makes it easy for them to do that. So, but I like this area right up here, and this is cutting that off. So let's see if five by seven will get that. And it does. So this is gonna be a five by seven instead of four by five. And there you go, I like that. And that's gonna be what I work with. Ooh, I like that a lot, okay. So I'm going to just try daylight white balance with it. Uh, see, now I don't like that. And I've seen a lot of really red images of Antelope Canyon. I mean, it looks okay, but um, um, I like it when it's got that brown to it. So we'll go back to a shot. It has kind of a brown in it. To me, I like that a little more. The tones are kind of richer. So I'm going to stay with that. So now sometimes I just like to start off with auto. And that just gives me a starting point to go with. And that's what I'm doing here. Of course, in Antelope Canyon, contrast is your friend. So I'm going to give it a little contrast, not too much. Highlights, it's definitely pushing down. It uh, really pushed up the shadows, but I kind of like my shadows in Antelope Canyon. So I'm going to bring those back down to more neutral. And the blacks, I always like extra blacks in Antelope Canyon. I'm going to give it just a little bit of clarity and just a little bit of vibrance, but I'm going to show you a much cooler way to uh, use to uh, enhance the clarity and vibrance in another slider. And now we're going to go to sharpening. So I'm just going to give it a little bit here up to about 70. And I'm going to put my radius at 1.8. These are pretty standard settings for me. But now I only want to sharpen, you know, the edges. I don't want to apply this necessarily everywhere. So I'm going to hit Alt and then slide the mask. And that's going to show me where my sharpening is applied. 
and I want it on the lines of the canyon in those different places. I don't necessarily need to over sharpen on the flat areas that can cause graininess. I like this. I like uh, what it's done. I like the depth and just cool little weird little image. Um, ISO 800. If you're worried about noise reduction at 800, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not going to do anything at all with that. I don't see any chromatic aberration in this picture, but it's something you got to watch out for when you do these HDRs. Chromatic aberration is when you look at a high contrast area and there might be like a little line of purple uh, highlighting it or maybe green. This does a pretty good job of removing that chromatic aberration, gives you a slider to help with that. Now here's my favorite one, the dehaze filter. It's over in the FX effects. You have this same thing in Lightroom. It's extremely powerful. It's a great, uh, great tool. Watch what it does. It's really good for uh, landscape shots too, but it applies just a really great kind of clarity and contrast and of course dehaze. So that's what we've done with that. And now that's as much as I'm going to do with it in RAW. And now I'm going to take it into uh, Photoshop. And so now because this is the only image that was highlighted, this is the only image that it's going to open in Photoshop. And uh, I like this, but you know, there's something bugging me about crop. I don't know. You know what I mean? I like that better. Yeah, that is better. Just the angle there. I'm not really sure what the... Yeah, I like that better. So, okay. Now with this, I, I just want a little more pop. I don't want it to be red. I don't or anything like that. Th these things are a distraction. They got to go for me. That's just me. Maybe you don't care for getting rid of things like this, but to me, this thing sticking out from the side of the image is going to drive me nuts. It adds no value to my picture, and it's just a distraction. And as you know, there's no moving things around when you're in there. You're moving fast. So I'm going to get rid of these because I hate them. Okay. And I'll take a good look around the image. There's a little something that occurred as a result of my crop. Get rid of that. And for other stuff that just might distract this screen. There we go. All right, so now I like uh, these Nick effects, and they're free. And uh, when it comes to drama, they do they can help, but you got to be careful because you can overdo it. Notice when it creates this digital negative file, it labels this layer zero instead of the normal background layer. I'm not sure why it does that, but you need to flatten your image before you move on. So now I've flattened my image, and I'm going to open Color Effects Pro. And Skylight Filter is a fun one for adding a richness to something, but you got to be careful because it's easy to overdo. See, that don't look right. But it does look, it gives it just a little bit of a glow, so I like just that much. Now, first I'm going to look at Pro Contrast here. And I'm going to turn up the Dynamic Contrast just a little bit. And color correct, color cast. I like that now how it's given a glow to things and through here. I'm not sure that's the one I want to use. So I'm going to turn it off for a second. I'm going to take a quick look at tonal contrast. That's my baby right there. Now you're looking at it and saying, wow, that is really overdone, Dave. I don't know if I like that. Got it. I understand. I'm gonna, so I'm not going to use uh, pro contrast on this one. And I agree with you. But here's the great thing about Nick Effects and working with layers. I don't have to have it that overdone at all. So I'm just going to choose these two. 
and I'm going to turn up the skylight filter here because I know what I'm about to do and you'll see why I did that in a second. So now I'm going to open these and you'll see what it did is it created a layer here, right here and some things it did good with, some things it made worse. Kind of made this down here worse, in my opinion. I don't really want to focus on all the footsteps and all that junk on the bottom. I really like how it made this is a little too hot. So I'm going to take my selection tool right here, and I'm going to select the bottom area here. I don't want to select the canyon because I like what it did to the canyon. I'm going to select this little just the floor here. And then I'm going to say select inverse and create a layer mask. And so my dynamic effect now is only affecting the wall, not the floor. See how layer masks work? They're powerful. I like it. But I don't want it necessarily so overdone. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. You know what? Not too much. Turn it down to about 90 here, and then you can kind of see the effect. So you can really see the striations and everything there in the picture, but it's not overdone. And I really like how you can see the glow of the light. I like that. That's cool. So then uh, you can save the layers and go back and do it different ways. But I'm kind of, I don't know, I got my way of doing things. So now I'm going to wind up flattening it. And as I look at this, hmm. I'm wondering about the sunlight, and I'm going to take her right back in color effects. I'm just going to take a quick look at making that sunlight pop a little more. Now, to do that, I'm going to click on sunlight. See what that did? You kind of see what happens there. Now, I'm, again, I'm not going to want that much. It's just washing everything out. I'm wondering. A little glow there. Mm, I don't know. I don't think I like it. Never mind. All right. And then there's nothing to say that you can't take it right back into Camera Raw after you've done these adjustments. And I'm going to see what adding a little more dehaze is going to do to my tone mapped image. And what it's going to do is make it just a little bit cooler. That's exactly what I did. And I'm keeping that. And that's kind of my baby right there. I like that image. Kind of cool, kind of different. Not the same one you always see in the canyon. A little bit different. And uh, I'll wind up uh, saving that to a TIFF and then I'll save it to a JPEG. And that's going to be my image. So, and to do that, you just say File, Save As. I always save as, I always have some, at least one TIFF, just because it's an uncompressed image. If I want to go back and make little minor changes, I can. So I always do save as a TIFF. You don't have to, you've already got. But I'd say save as a TIFF because when you go to save the DNG, it's only going to say, it won't save with the, uh, the changes that you just made. So there we go, I'm saving it, the uncompressed image, and I can always go back to this if I want to. All right, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know we moved fast, but if we did, remember, you can always see whatever I'm, uh, whatever keystroke I'm doing right here, and you can pause it and then catch up with me. And thank you very, very much for coming on our bucket list tour. That was so much fun. And the images that I've been seeing on Facebook are just fantastic, you guys did such a great job. So, so proud to be associated with you guys. Uh, thank you much. And uh, I'll probably be doing one more of these uh, regarding a panorama. All right. 